mean, it could be lah, which is why then <laughs> then we 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 new way lah, you know. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of the Chain Debrief Podcast, the podcast about all things cryptocurrencies. On today's episode, uh, we'll be talking about something that I think is on a lot of people's minds, mm-hmm. which is the markets, which is very red at the moment. Very, very red. Very red is an understatement right now. It is bleeding red. Bleeding red. It's dark red, maroon. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Like we'll just we'll just get right into it. I think it's safe to say that we're in a bear market, lah. Right? Yes. Are we in a bear market? Are we in a bear market? Um, I would think so. So I think in 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 terms of crypto space, right? Uh, a bear market. I read somewhere mm. that uh, it is characterized by a drawdown of twenty percent. Yeah. So definitions wise. Definition it meets. wise, I think it fits because if you look at uh Bitcoin and Ether from its all time high, right? Yeah. Bitcoin all time high was what sixty nine. Mm. I think it dropped to almost thirty five already. The drawdown is almost yeah. like what a fifty percent mm. drawdown. So Safe to say, I think from a Bitcoin perspective, we are in a at least a downtrend for a while already. Mm. Um, but I also recently, you know, um, uh, read somewhere that you know, in in terms of like bear market wise, right? There are actually over the couple next uh, over the last couple of months, there are certain areas in the crypto market that may be in a bull market. Bitcoin is in a bear market, confirm because sixty nine to thirty five, yep. right? But the last few months. Uh, in terms of like there are a few coins that we mentioned about they are actually in a bull market yeah so like there is the this year the narrative was uh you know the the the, the ibc narrative so atom blew up a bit near uh, ecosystem also blew up a bit ftm also blew up a bit so if you are in any of this uh ecosystem you your portfolio will be in a bull market mm. so increasingly right people are saying that you know the whole crypto market is sort of like decoupling or detaching from uh, Bitcoin and Ether already. So okay. de- depending on where you are, where you are invested in, you may still be in the bull market. Although overall we are in a bear market. If you look at the whole total market cap of, of crypto as a whole, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. But I mean, over the last three days, uh, over the le- the weekend, uh, is a bloodbath lah. Mm. Like it's just damn chala lah. So I want to I want to dive in a little bit. So you talk about the decoupling of like Bitcoin and ETH, uh, right? Mm. So um. I think there's always like we even mentioned this I mean I think maybe like four or five episodes ago where like the reason to be a little bit bullish on BTC is that every time there's newcomers to the space mm. the assumption is that BTC will be the first thing that they jump into. Yeah. That's why there's always going to be a case. reasons a case for BTC, right? Yeah. But are we now saying that this is no longer likely? Yeah, so I think increasingly the answer is no. People are starting to pick their first coin on like new blockchains, for example, Luna yeah. is very very popular. New ones, uh. Uh, FTM, for example, is very hot right now. Even Dogecoin, for example, right? People might be buying that for as their first coin, mm. and not Bitcoin and Ether, right? So in that sense, you know, um, uh, the performance of crypto might be decoupled uh, from the performance of 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 uh, Bitcoin right now, lah. I mean, that's what I'm reading uh, and what people say right now, lah. But I do feel like. You know you're right. So people don't really buy the the whole idea of like Bitcoin will make me rich is like yeah. slowly bore or no more already. Yeah. People are no longer thinking about getting rich by buying Bitcoin, but people are thinking about you know still getting rich uh, with crypto. But then what is the vehicle, right? What, what's the crypto, right? So um, yeah, lo, I think I think that's that, lah. Yeah, I think and then totally like speaking to my friends who are probably very very new to crypto who, or are still non crypto natives. I think a lot of them that are exploring the space also feel like there is a narrative that it's too late to get into Bitcoin already, mm. and so then they are looking for like. Uh, like I think I think a lot of them the first one they aimed into was probably either Luna or, it, or, or FTM yeah so, so in that sense you know um, Bitcoin might be in a bear market but certain ecosystems mm. which are blowing up which has a lot of liquidity which has a lot of volume which has a lot of like activity development, development yeah. they are in a bull market yeah so in that sense, you know, early this year, you know, um, people might say that, hey, you know, Bitcoin, uh, bear market very long already. But actually, for some pockets of, uh, in the crypto space, right, we're actually in a bull market. Open C NFT space, for example, blowing up, right. Mm. Um, but overall, I think you know, uh, if you're in the right ecosystem, right thematic place, you will be in a bull market. Um, but I mean, over the last three days, last weekend, that one, right, 
I think definitely damn intense. Everything, anything that you buy, confirm is uh, at least <laughs> I'll think a twenty percent or thirty percent drawdown lah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I I would say we are. Uh, you know, a bit part of a correction due to the macro macro um, uh, factors, right? Yeah. So um, I would say we are in a, we are definitely not in a bull market right now. Yeah. <laughs> so I think like if your position is red at the moment and you're mm. down, uh, and you've been, your portfolio has been severely affected by like the market crash. I think it's safe to call it a crash, right? Mm. Um, I think if it is, if this is especially your first crash, there's quite a lot of behaviors that you should try and avoid. Because mm. I know when I was a young investor back in the day or so, I mean, not that long ago, la, I would make a lot of mistakes, right? Yep. And I know a lot of people who are making a lot of these like mistakes when it comes to market crashes. Mm. So I want to discuss some of like the absolute don'ts when it comes to a market crash. So what's a don't for you? I think the first most obvious one is don't panic sell. Mm. Because I think if you're a new investor who suddenly said, oh my God, I want to come into crypto to make me rich. And then it doesn't make you rich. You actually, you actually lost like about half your money or like forty percent of your money. And then, I think it's human nature to suddenly feel I want to take my cash back and hold it. But if you panic sell, you only are realizing your losses. And if you and it's going to seem like a recurring theme. But like if you really believe that crypto is going to be the future of technology and the internet and all these things, yeah. Then it will recover. Cause I mean we've been we've been through this before. Yeah. The dif- the reasons are different, but we've been through this before and. Yeah. crypto will recover so, so you're right so it can feel very very scary like if you look at the drawdown over the last three days right the last weekend right actually I have never seen it in real time as I did last weekend mm. during COVID period 2020 right there was a very big drawdown it was very, very fast yep. but it's very clear that that was because of COVID so you're like okay lah whatever lah suck time lah in November last year there was a there was a uh, mini crash but that's more of like forced liquidation a lot of people a lot of people are leveraging so then when they hit their uh stop loss right then you just go all the way down um and that one rebound bounce back up very very fast the ones that we see last weekend right feels like you know everyone is a collectively say that okay collectively agree that we're in a bear market let's all sell because there's like no hope already mm. and it's a bit intense and a bit scary like I've also never seen this kind of like fear in the system in the market um, yeah so it can be very very scary and you, you can be you can be very tempted to sell away and just like ah yeah F it lah you mm. know like just whatever lah I'm, I'm unlucky and then I just come in I cannot burn I try to smart <laughs> but I, I feel like you know we at this stage, we need to hold back. Don't do anything rash. It's a bit too late to sell right now. Yep. Um, and just know that we have made so much progress. Yep. All the big companies are coming in and we've come so far. And it's a bit ridiculous to think that blockchain technology, all the progress that we've made will go to zero. It's just doesn't make sense. Ma. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I think it's very easy to suddenly think, oh my God, doom and gloom because of something but the most important thing that people always mention like you follow Twitter what, is to zoom out right yeah. when you zoom out you realise that at the end of the day there is an upward trend Yeah. but there's always going to be highs and lows la. yeah so so yeah don't panic sell and then another thing that I would caution against is basically space out your uh, your your bullets or so la. so if you are trying to pick up you know wow there's a lot of discount right now if you have uh, you know some savings that you want to invest in don't go all in you can you know don't dca all the way so spread out your bullets and um because we might go lower mm. right um but if you do have some spare cash i think now is a good time to average down mm. um with you know with the idea or with the thinking that it might go even further down um i mean that's what i'm doing also la. so i'm uh you know i might i'm planning like two dcas down Okay. Yeah, okay. That's my plan. Yeah. yeah, which I think I think another tip I would say is also don't simply just ape everything into a dip because like especially when we are in a downtrend, you never know when it could go further. Mm. So it's a lot safer to average down like Jackie mentioned. I think it's sometimes very tempting, right? Like you suddenly see, oh, ETH suddenly went to two point five. Yeah. Then you suddenly go, Okay, la, I'm gonna go put everything or, or like even at like two point eight, right? I know a lot of people just 
you know, liquidated and then uh, other positions and then jump into ETH. Yeah. And then it dropped to like 2.3 further. Um, I think at the end of the day also, if you believe that it's going to hit a certain level, it doesn't matter whether you buy at 2.3 or 2.8. But yeah. still, you know, don't start like, try to be a little bit more cautious and like a little bit smarter about the whole situation. Yeah, I, I think this dip also is a very good training for us. Mm. Um, you know, it's very easy for me to say, but it's very painful for me last weekend. <laughs> it's damn painful for me, I have to say. So. No, it's painful for everybody. Yeah, so you're not in this, you're not in this alone, right? Um, and it's like easy to- for us to say like, hey, just hold, but it's also very painful for us. La. <laughs> um, but I would think it's a very good training for us to use to this kind of volatility yeah. Yeah. and know that all the progress again I keep on reiterating this impossible like I cannot be yeah, yeah, yeah. we cannot be this wrong like yeah. how can Eve go to $100 yeah cannot be like if if let's say if let's say today draw down another 80% that's what how much uh, to 300 bucks mm. Eve dropped to 300 bucks cannot be if last year right the amount of transaction that's being processed on the Ethereum blockchain right is more than what the Visa has transacted has processed last year mm. I could be wrong but it's either versus Visa or Mastercard yeah, I, I've so seen the, the same stats, yeah. blockchain the volume process on ETH blockchain is more than Visa and Mastercard they dropped to 380% drawdown how can it be it cannot be one yeah. like so you just have to know the progress that we have made so far it cannot be zero already uh, so you just have to remind yourself um, and I think this is where you know like you have to remember to build your conviction you have to know like you have to trust that blockchain and crypto will deliver mm. because it's proven you know companies are jumping in institutions everyone is coming in and anyone that has a taste of crypto cannot go back to traditional equities already um, and just have to hold your ground I, I think the other don't I would say is is don't let this scare you out of crypto yeah at most it's it's a lesson la. I mean like again I hope you didn't panic sell so that you wouldn't have realized any losses and yeah. you can recover all of that but even if you did, like, don't don't be afraid of crypto because again, it's about your conviction. I think something else also was that um is is, is don't simply try and rotate or like buy into something just because it's cheap. Yeah. And like it doesn't fit your portfolio strategy. Yeah. I think what a lot of people don't have is when they when they come into crypto is that they don't kind of think of their portfolio on a more holistic level. Mm. And so, like how I personally like to do is that I you know I I've segmented like, this one for like high risk. This one a little bit safer. This one is just pure, pure DeFi play and etc. Right. So I think if you suddenly just see, oh my god, everything's so cheap, and I'm just gonna ape into it, and then like there's no real place for it in your portfolio. So I think don't don't do that. Yeah. Also, la. Yeah. I think you just need to know what you buy, lor, I guess. Yeah. Um, and have the conviction to hold, lah. Mm. Um, if no conviction, then if if crypto is stressing you out, and you know making you very depressed. <laughs> I think then it's a good time to maybe think about whether you want to cut loss and just move on uh, and hold some safer coins and and whatnot lah. Uh, yeah. yeah. But I think you know like situations like this isn't only um, isolated to crypto, right? Mm. It happens in the stock market as well. Yeah. And so, like it's it's good practice, like Jackie mentioned, to be rational at moments like this mm. because it's easy to be emotional. It's easy to go, oh my god, I can't believe I did this. I want to take all my money back. But the right thing to do, which a majority of people don't do, is to just rationally go, okay, it's okay, everything will recover eventually, and then you can, yeah, you but, can but sell it's, then. Yeah, but it's also okay to sell. Yeah, fair enough. So if you, you know, your portfolio uh, is bleeding right now, let's say, uh, you know, your profits are returned back to the market already, and you feel like it's, it might be going lower, um, you know, it's okay to sell also, mm. right? Whatever that makes you comfortable and you know lesser stress lah mm. uh, you should do that um, and there's n- absolutely no excuse or like there's no reason why you shouldn't sell if you are like if it's stressing you out lah yeah. it, it's similar to there's no ex- like there's you shouldn't feel bad with taking profits also yeah. lah yeah yeah because I think there's always a lot of like um, bad associations right negative associations like, oh you took profit you took profit yeah. you're not a diamond hand you know that kind of thing but yeah. there's really no shame at the end of the day if you made life it's your own money. yeah it's your own yeah. Yeah, it's your like, own money so I think let's move on to like besides the don't what are some like advice or tips that you, we might have right like have did you rotate or if you didn't like how would you have rotated like your positions 
knowing that a crash was going to come? I think a month ago, I was rotating into FTM already. Mm. Um, so I'm quite heavy on FTM right now. Um, part of my rotation, I took some of my capital out. Okay. So so my, my crypto portfolio, right, is uh, my capital and then the profits, right? So the capital that I took out is probably about... Uh, I took some out lah. And that capital is basically my stable position right now. But it's a very, very small portion. I, my stable is only at like uh, 10% or 10 plus percent right now. Because I then I took out already and I'm like sitting on stable right. I'm like, ah, yeah, this is a bit stupid. So I put back <laughs> in again. Then it crashes all the way down. Oh my God. So If you just waited one week. Yeah, so what I would have done, I mean, quite easy for us to look back on hindsight, right? What I would have done is basically, I would take more stable out. On those stables, I would farm... Uh, on FTM mm. yeah so what I don't do I for me my farming uh, strategy is basically I only do single staking and single farming yep. because I don't want to do I, I, I don't want to go through the, the, pairs, uh, the, the impermanent, IM, loss, and impermanent loss yep. correct I was a bit stupid or rather I didn't understand it fully um, actually ILs are okay if for example let's say you 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 think that a market a bear market is coming already because you continue to farm and then actually you're only exposed to uh the ftm pair for example ftm uh stable pair right ftm will crash anyway right so you are still keeping your stable position uh, position there yeah. and then you're farming it at 100 plus percent or 200 percent for example so what i would have done is that i would have converted more to stable and then I will farm the uh, token stable pair, mm. which could be, let's say if I have Luna rather than Luna UST, for example, yep. and then uh, FTM uh, UST, for example, and then if I have other coins like ETH uh, uh, stable, for example, right, I'll do more of those farm. Uh, but I didn't because I was very, very fixated on doing single stick, which basically like Luna, I just stick it, I get 7% or like FTM, I stick it, I get 14%. Purely just to avoid the impermanent loss. Purely to avoid right. it. Yeah, right. so I'm very, very fixated on that, which I, I guess there's nothing wrong. Mm. Um, but if I were to do the the, the, US, the stable farming, right, I think I would have been able to farm more, like get more return. Yeah. That's something I, I would have done. Yeah, what about you? Do you do any rotation like before you get out before the shit show? I didn't. I didn't. And so I just, I thanked the losses. Like, uh, not a loss yet. Like a man. Uh, you know, not a loss, but like uh, the, the, you know, you get to a stage where like when the markets are good, right? You're, ch- you're checking coin market care every five minutes. Yeah. Going, wow, you're damn proud of yourself and everything yep. is great. And then at this stage, it's like, eh, I haven't checked it in two days. I don't. I don't think I want to see it because you know, yeah. like you kind of just like you just kind of know lah. But I think the what what the the crash has kind of like reminded me, which I've always known, but I I, th- I think it brings it back to psychology, right? We don't talk so much about like the, the price and all and 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 like the the technicalities, the psychology when it's when it comes to the markets. For the longest time, I've always felt very, and and I was just talking to my friend about this the other day. Like for the longest time, we both felt very sien that we weren't early enough to be crypto millionaires. While he was rational enough to, to see it that way, I was irrational to keep on wanting to chase the high, right? I know, okay, I didn't make it, but now I'm so aware of cryptocurrencies. I want to chase. What is the latest L1? What's the latest alpha? Okay, let's go. Let's put in 2K. Let's put in 5K. Let's put in, you know, X number of Ks inside. And then I got to a stage where I'm like, suddenly I look at my portfolio and I'm like, oh my God, how did I get to, how did I dilute my, my, BT, my BTC? My was like 50% of my portfolio, but because I kept aping into everything, it's now like, 20% of my portfolio because I just kept aping into all these like random like L1s or different alphas and all this and I just went like oh, okay I think I've really overdone this right and then the worst part is that like the time in which I buy is like oh I want to buy this today okay I wait another day then the next day is like it went down okay I'm buying the dip you know but it only went down by like 2% right and, like, I'm buying the dip I feel so proud of myself when like I've told myself this for a very long time Crashes are always going to happen. Wait till a crash to happen to come and enter the market. And now that a crash is here, I've I have no more bullets to play with. Yeah, you know, and I'm in like down positions because I was so impatient trying to chase the high as opposed to being rational. I think I'm keeping my cash position now. Or let's put it into stables. Let's farm that. When a crash happens, then let's go in. So I think like it was a very like important wake up call for me to go do. Remember what you told yourself a long time ago, lah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean that, that that's a good that's a good reali- realization. 
without any more bullets to play with lah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean the idea here is that you know future position like when when everything hopefully recovers and hopefully it doesn't like most of the coins recover as well eventually um I think I'm going to start concentrating. Yeah. I think I'm going to start making sure that I keep a strong stable position either way just so that I have more bullets to play with. Yeah. Because an eventual crash is going to happen. I think that's something that we need to get used to. Mm. Um, But the bounce back will also come. Mm. You remember in 2017 everything crashed. If you just held on, right? Today you're still up a lot. Mm. Oh, for sure. Yeah, so just you remember like if you don't need the money, just park it there first. Yeah. Yeah, so like don't I also try it. to I mean in in crypto term it's like coping lah. So, so I'm just, <laughs> I also try to like make myself feel good like okay, it's just temporary and yeah. then eventually it will go up. Yeah. And like just don't see it's okay, suck it up, you know, it's part of the process. Um yeah, look, I I feel like we just need to remember that it will come yeah exactly yeah. that exactly that. i think the good news is that we have 2017 we have early 2020 to kind of remind us of like what those times were like mm. and to at the end of the day like huh, everybody got out of it yeah and it's just going to it's just going to be fine lah. yeah yeah i mean okay sorry i th- i think one other one other lesson that i probably had was to i think we touched upon this earlier which is to to take profits because whenever you try and hold and then a um, crash happened you just regret it like i think the ens tokens was another like one that i was talking to you the other time right like um based on its all time high i think i had like 18k of it worth mm. and now it's like worth 3k just cuz mm. i like i diamond handed it and i'm like hey guys i'm going to diamond hand mm. ens for no reason mm. um so i think again no shame in taking profits because you know you don't rotate it then hold cash position on whatsoever but it gives you bullets to play with in the future lah. Yeah. I think at the end of the day you just need to remember that you are not competing with, with anyone else. You're exactly. competing with yourself. Mm. So, if today you if you feel like you are down a lot and you feel very uncomfortable with it. Yeah. You want to sell then you sell lah and then keep cash on and then wait for the market to come back yeah. until you are more comfortable and then you just go back in again that's fine you, you don't have to prove anything to anybody correct yeah. and i think ultimately we just have to survive go through this mm. don't be liquidated and lose everything i guess yeah. because if you sell today and then um you still have a uh, capital you live to fight another day exactly then we are still very very early like oh my god like <laughs> <laughs> like the crypto total market cap I always need to defer to everyone look at the total market cap of the whole crypto industry mm. we are less than 2 trillion right now uh, I I would think it's like 1.7 1.6 right now we are back to where we were in April last year yeah. I if I'm not wrong lah and what about the progress that we made last year like oh my god guys last year so many things happened in the crypto industry like ETFs are launched, you know, all the countries are launching their own stable coins, you know, Adidas lah, Facebook, everyone is coming to the space like we are so early, just don't don't panic. Like live to fight another day. Exactly. Just hold through it and then if you feel like you want to preserve your capital right now, then sell everything, preserve your capital, put it there or like just farm stable coin, right? And just go back in again whenever you're comfortable lah. We, mm. we 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 are the total market cap of crypto is going to be 100 trillion. Okay, just okay to bring this back a little bit to to reality, right? Not that I doubt that, <laughs> but if you look at some of the numbers, right? Okay, before the crash, yeah. the total market cap of crypto was about almost three trillion. Uh, almost three under, trillion. Yeah. Almost three trillion. In comparison, right, the S and P 500 is more than 30 trillion dollars. Okay. In terms of market cap. Yeah. And this is just the S&P 500. We're not talking yeah. about all of stock market. Yes. That's how early we are still. Yeah. So it cannot be the whole global financial ecosystem just I mean, it could be lah which is why then <laughs> then we 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 anyway lah. <laughs> you know. Then we we'll anyway lah guys, but if you believe that the whole global financial system is going to work for the next 50 years. It, yeah. We are so early. Crypto was so early. So don't Trust. be don't be don't lose lah. Don't lose now. Don't lose, don't be disheartened, don't lose heart. Don't give up on crypto. And just remember the progress that we have made this year. Cool of the I day. I always say remember, remind yourself like you play a drinking game every time you mention that. Just remember, just remember it's okay like hold. Hold. Hold on to your life. Yes.
Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Chain TV Podcast. If you haven't already, do subscribe to this channel, like this video, and also join our Telegram community. Actually, we should start a support group. <laughs> <laughs> we should, market we should, we should, we should. So check out uh, the links below. All our community links are there. And uh, also, we have an upcoming NFT. If you haven't heard about it, go and check out the link below. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.